Hello citizens and welcome back. In today's video I want to talk about the new cargo mechanics implemented with the Hull Sea. As always, if you like this video, sacrifice a like and a comment to the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more. And here's a shout out to our amazing patrons for their support of the channel and the armory. Before we get into the video, I want to say that these mechanics are subject to change and iteration before the final product. But what we have now is probably locked in for 320, so it's important that we give our feedback. Cargo operations will eventually be implemented for all ships, but the current implementation likely isn't the way forward. First, let's talk about what changes were implemented and why. For those of you who may be new to Star Citizen or perhaps haven't heard of the Hull series before, the Hull series is a line of ships focused on hauling large quantities of cargo. There are multiple variants ranging from A to E with increasing cargo capacity. The quirk of these ships is that they are capable of expanding and retracting their cargo spindle, essentially changing the size of the ship. The important note here is that as far as we know, the Hull A, the smallest of the series, is the only one that can land with the cargo spindle extended. The others can't, which is why the implemented change was needed. You need to extend the cargo spindle to load cargo, but all but one of the hulls can't land with the cargo spindle extended, so you need to figure out a way to load cargo without landing. Fortunately, the larger hulls are not intended to land, to load or unload cargo. They are meant to transport large volumes over long distances, meaning they will mostly be docking at orbital stations. It is also important to note that the hull C fits onto the docking collar even with the cargo spindle extended, and likely the larger hulls would do as well. This would, in theory, solve the problem with loading cargo with extended spindles and CIG should have probably stopped here. However, as is tradition for CIG, they spent a lot of effort on developing a new system to facilitate loading cargo onto the newly released hull C. This new process is not very complicated, but it is quite tedious. You have to dock your hull C, then head to the admin office and set up your trades. This removes money from your wallet and assigns the newly purchased cargo to you. But the cargo doesn't get loaded onto your ship just yet. Now you have to head back to your hull, undock and call the cargo services of the station. This will assign you a cargo loading area. Now you have to fly there, extend the cargo spindle and then the loading timer starts. As the timer runs down, containers will transfer onto your ship. This is already pretty tedious, but if you want to sell and buy, you have to do the whole process twice. That is extremely annoying as is, but there are also a few quirks to this. First of all, if the loading area is disrupted in any way, for example another ship accidentally or deliberately entering it, loading will stop until the disruption is cleared. Unless addressed, this creates a griefing opportunity, essentially blocking you from loading all your cargo. CAG did add a hard trespass zone to the loading area, but it remains to be seen if it will be an effective deterrent. Which ties to the second issue. If you leave the station for whatever reason, your cargo will be forfeit. And as far as I know, your money is not refunded when this happens. Fortunately, if you decide to log out at the station, the cargo will persist to your next session. Now, I expected CAG to implement an escrow service for this version of cargo loading to prevent this exact issue. It would certainly make the whole process safer. But that doesn't change the fact that this whole thing is completely unnecessary in the first place. Extended hulls fit onto docking collars, so why not just utilize the existing mechanics of cargo loading? I think this may have been an attempt by CAG to give meaning to cargo decks which have been collecting dust for the past two years. But in reality, this feature has absolutely nothing to do with cargo decks besides that the loading areas appear near the exterior cargo deck structure. Not only this, but also the new mechanics apply to only one ship and in the future will only apply to the Hull series. CAG now have to maintain two separate cargo systems. And I can't help but conclude that this new feature was a complete waste of developer time and will waste a lot of player time as well. Now, there is some merit to this. CAG can use this separate and limited system to test out cargo timers and in the future possibly manual and automated cargo loading. However, even if this is true, the current implementation is premature. But this begs the question, how do we salvage the concept of cargo decks? Well, CAG could add dedicated docking collars directly to the cargo deck. This would not only increase the docking capacity of stations, but also allow direct access to any future cargo deck features. Next, allow us to offload and store cargo on cargo decks. 
because maybe I want to collect cargo from multiple planetary locations and then transfer it to a hull seat to transport it out of the system. But ultimately the cargo decks are missing a lot of features and CIG have to start somewhere. But this was not it. And with that being said, that's all for tonight. What do you think? Are the hull seat loading mechanics good? How can CAG improve cargo decks? Let me know in the comments, thank you for watching, fly safe and I will see you in the verse.